I'm just going to tweet you. Hold on a second. Great. This is a, a Lego iPhone case, by the way, actual, actual Lego. You're not, you're not a real geek unless you have one of these. You can, you can build on it. Um, so, there's a really interesting thing happening uh, around identity and social media and the internet and mobile at the moment. Um, I just want to talk about it a little bit. This, this is uh, a very long quotation. There, used, there was once in the early days of the internet, you're pretty much all too young to remember the early days of the internet, but there was a, a famous cartoon in The Spectator uh, and it was a dog at a keyboard and, and the line was on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Um, and, you know, the, the question is, what do people know about you uh, on the internet and, and, and how, do they, how do they know it? So that quotation comes from uh, this book by, as uh, David mentioned, by Santiago Swallow, who is a, a Los Angeles-based social media identity guru. Um, and, and this is the book that's coming out, Imaginary Identities in the, in the Age of the Internet. Um, and if you want to know more about Santiago, there's, there's a lot on, uh, on Wikipedia about him. He's a very interesting guy with some, some very interesting uh, opinions. Um, this is his Twitter profile. As you can see, um, he's very kind of hip guy, uh, speaks at TED, goes to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, which is where I live, has his own website, has more than 80,000 uh, Twitter followers. Um, and, you know, another way we understand how important people are on the internet now is there are various services which will uh, sort of quantify um, the, the importance of, of particular people. Uh, and this is one of those. This is, this is one of the popular ones. It's called CRED. And you can see, you know, you can only get 1,000 CRED points. Uh, Santiago, you know, is, is really in the top 1% here. He's got uh, 754. He's a very influential guy. Um, and I made him up. I made him up in about three hours one Sunday afternoon in April um, for an online publication called Quartz. Um, and it cost me about $56. And I'll show you how I spent those dollars. Uh, and the, the, the cred score I just showed you and the Twitter uh, screen grab I just showed you um, came less than 24 hours after I had invented Santiago. Um, so the question is, how, how, how did this imaginary character uh, get a, a cred score of 754, um, more than 80,000 Twitter followers, and what does that tell us uh, about identity in the age of, of social media? So uh, I have this, it's, this is a very cool uh, program uh, actually made by um, a guy in uh, Bodmin, Cornwall, believe it or not. It's, it's called Scrivener. It's a, it's a very good kind of word processor for authors and writers. And you can generate character names on Scrivener. So this is a screen grab uh, for when I was trying to think of a name for my imaginary character. Uh, in the end, I checked the box for mail. I, I checked the box for alliteration. I turned the obscurity level up way high. Uh, and one of the names was Santiago Swallow, and that seemed to be a, a good name, so we had a name. Um, and then I got him a Gmail account, because getting a, some kind of email account is a prerequisite for getting a, a Twitter account, um, and there we go. So within a couple of minutes, um, my imaginary friend is on Twitter. Um, Amazon is, is kind of like the, you know, the upscale shopping experience on the internet, and eBay is a bit like Christie's and Sotheby's. But there's this other e-commerce website, which is a bit like the guy who, 
who kind of nudges you in the nightclub and he has you know, something to sell um, on the black market inside his, his jacket. And that's Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And you can buy all sorts of dodgy, uh, somewhat illicit services um, on Fiverr uh, for $5. And one of these services is people who will add uh, followers to your Twitter profile. So having created my Twitter account, the next thing I did was I went to Fiverr uh, and I spent um, $20 on four of these services simultaneously um, and then just sat back and watched as, as Santiago, who hadn't yet tweeted anything, his Twitter followership just started to increase um, before my eyes. And then, then he needed a picture. Um, so I, I was working very quickly and very cheaply, so I grabbed three, three kind of handsome-looking uh, images from Google Images. Actually, the bottom one, that's Brad Pitt's chin. Um, he did these weird, like, uh, Chanel fragrance commercials. And, this is one of the shots from there, which is funny because people then thought Santiago had a mullet, um, despite it actually being, being Brad. But we mushed them, I mushed them together uh, pretty badly, um, and, and that's how Santiago got his face. Um, what a lot of people don't know is I was actually going for somebody who looked a lot like the news editor at Quartz, um, which is this guy, uh, Gideon Litchfield. So here's our private eye style. Uh, look alike. So, you know, we had a little bit of an inside joke going on with uh, Santiago's appearance. Um, and then the other thing that I did, uh, I wanted um, Santiago to have a verified Twitter account. So Twitter have this, uh, they, they grant you verification if they choose to. It's kind of like winning the Nobel Prize or something. You can't apply for it. Um, and they give you this check mark. Um, but you can fake it fairly well. So I basically grabbed the check mark and then located it in his Twitter background, um, <laughs> which is against the rules, by the way. And you mustn't do it because Deb is here and he will, he will report me. Um, it doesn't quite work because they put a little kind of uh, black kind of tint over the top, but it's good enough. Um, uh, and then, then my problem is Santiago has to say something. Um, so uh, I started off with this free thing that I found called uh, Tweet Adder because I was really needed to go quickly, and I wanted him to have this uh, this Teddish, you know, hipster kind of thing. So I came up with these nouns that Teddish hipster people, you know, phablets and and. Tom's shoes and you know all this stuff, um, uh, and then the singularity and various other things and all this all this stuff and uh, um, mushed it all together. And he started generating these sentences. Um, this was quite a good one actually. The black keys are the new black. I was quite pleased with that one. But um, every once in a while, he was quite profound. Um, but sometimes, you know, not so much. Uh, so this is some of the nonsense that he started spewing uh, to his 80,000 followers. And I realized that I had a problem at this point um, because, you know, this, it, nobody was going to look at this and think this was a real person. So I sort of had to delve into some more scripting. Um, <laughs> And over a few hours, I managed to figure out ways to you know, just get a little bit more sophisticated. The beautiful thing about uh, Twitter, and I'll come on to this, is the 140 character limit, um, which doesn't give you so much runway to get into trouble when you're, you're trying to fake uh, natural language. Um, and then the other thing that I, I did, which worked pretty well, was... Um, I realized I could use Google Translate. If I could identify the language of somebody who friended Santiago, which was often quite easy to do, um, you could then use Google Translate uh, and, and talk to them in their own language. Um, and another thing, I, if, if people were talking about bots, if they were wondering if he was a bot, he had a, a bunch of canned bot-related comments. So this is a, 
this is a joke. Uh, it's two robots go into a bar. The bartender says, what do you want to drink? One of the robots says, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Isn't, isn't that hilarious? You know, that was the, uh, that was the joke. But in this case, it, it translated it for this. Uh, this is a real person tweeting to the fake guy. Um, and another thing that I was able to do quite quickly is write a script where if he got a new follower uh, and they referenced their blog in their profile, um, he would go check out the, or he, the script would go check out the blog and see how long it was since the last blog post. And most people don't keep their blogs up to date. They kind of forget about them after a while. So uh, various expressions like this when somebody new joined. Oh my God, you haven't posted on your blog for such a long time. Uh, people found it kind of funny because they were like getting this interaction from this guy. Um, I, I want to just go back to this. This is, this is really interesting. The people at Cred got really upset when we published the fact that this fake guy within hours had got 754 points on Cred, which is far more credibility than I have, by the way. Um, and uh, and it, 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 this was actually uh, kind of ridiculous. I mean, this should not have happened. They're, they're selling an algorithm that is supposed to identify real influence on the internet. Uh, and they're selling it to companies uh, like these. And yet, this guy who didn't exist 12 hours earlier immediately had this fantastic rating. I mean, nobody goes from zero followers to 80,000 followers on Twitter in an afternoon. That's clearly suspect. Um, but it does kind of get to this problem of uh, what is known as the Turing test. This is uh, Alan Turing. He's a British uh, guy, um, one of the real pioneers of computing. And in a paper in 1950, he proposed that the way we would know if a computer could think was uh, if it could fool a human being into thinking it was human. Um, and it's never really been done. There have been, there's, there are sort of three levels of Turing test now, and, and, and uh, there's been some bronze winners, which is sort of a text-only uh, conversation. Um, but uh, the, the more advanced levels of the Turing test still have not been passed 60-plus uh, years Later, but there's, there's some other interesting things that have arisen about the Turing test. And one is what's called the reverse Turing test, which is whether a human being can figure out that somebody is a human being uh, via some kind of communication. Um, and then uh, can a computer figure out whether somebody is a human being is another interesting variation on the Turing test. And then uh, there's something else which is kind of somewhat more relevant, which is what can we judge about people's authenticity? If we gauge that they're human, uh, how can we determine uh, in a social interaction which is happening via text online and remotely um, how credible they really are, how authentic are they? And, you know, I can make a prediction today. I think the Turing test will get passed, and it will probably get passed by somebody involved in cybercrime. Because if you can do social engineering automatically, if you can convince people that you're real automatically, you have a very powerful uh, weapon for impersonation. So this, this will happen, and, and this is probably the environment it will happen in. But the, the challenge we have today is not just gauging whether somebody is human. And it doesn't take long to figure out Santiago is not human. Uh, the 140 character limit on Twitter is great but uh, people can read everything you say, so any repetition is suspicious. Uh, but, you know, take this guy. He's got 27,000 followers. He's a keynote speaker. He's a best-selling author, so on and so on. He's selling services. He's probably human. But is he lying? Well, we can go to his website. Apparently, he's got these books. He's been on these TV shows. But... Uh, if we check his Twitter followers, we find that 85% of them are not real, which is grounds for suspicion. I've tried repeatedly to get this man to respond to inquiries, but uh, he does not. Um, you know, here's another example. This lady is a financial expert, according to her now-deleted Wikipedia biography, uh, followed by the world's financial leaders, uh, 5,000 of them apparently, um, except no. Only 1% of her followers are real. So, you know, this is the challenge we're engaged in right now. Um, 
and this sort of pokes at a lot of different problems. You know, one is there are real people on Twitter. Yoni Sanchez is a Cuban dissident. Um, and the way these fake followers work is they follow real people too. So she has a large number of fake followers that she did not buy, but that's raised suspicions about her authenticity. Um, this is one of the ones Santiago came up with um, automatically that I thought was really interesting. It's my favorite tweet. And I think the summary of what I'm saying is this is not true. Just because they tweet doesn't mean they are. Um, and as for nobody on the internet knowing that you're a dog, uh, that's true because my dog has his own Facebook page uh, and Nicole Beasley uh, you know, clearly wanted to party with him. <laughs> so another variation on the Turing test is can you decide whether or not somebody's a dog? Uh, this is my real Twitter account, in case you have any questions. <laughs> Deb, don't give him a hard time, OK? <laughs> um, was it Kevin or was it Santiago who came up with this notion of the Internet of Things? Uh, that was me. That was definitely... I am the Antichrist who came up with the Internet of Things. <laughs> and what did you see way back... God, it's, it's almost a decade and a half ago, isn't it? Well, I'm only 23, so it can't be that. What did, what, did, what did you see then that is starting to happen now? Um, so that's a serious topic. Um, very briefly, computers, are, even today, are very dependent on us entering information. Most of the data on the internet is human-entered. It's keyboards, it's, it's cameras, it's whatever. Um, most of the information in the world is not appropriate for human entry. It's what's the temperature in this room? You know, are there any spare chairs? Uh, what's the weather like? Do we have enough bottles of water? And so, um, you know, really the next age of computing is going to be having computers understand the world by themselves. So we get, get to a place where we have information about things because you can't actually eat bits. You, uh, you do need things, and things are increasingly important, and not wasting them is increasingly important. So that, that was the insight back, back then, and it's happening now. I mean, there are going to be 2 billion smartphones sold this year. There are going to be 3 billion RFID tags. So uh, we are seeing this transition from, you know, mobile is huge, but the next thing will be, be sensing. So your wine glass and your table at home... We'll have a Twitter account. We'll know how drunk you are, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Santiago and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs>